What's up everybody, it's the EV Engineer and today I'm going to be showing you how to go hacker mode on CAN. So if you're interested in the automotive or robotics industries, CAN is your new best friend and the reason for that is because CAN is the de facto communication protocol between electronic control units in these vehicles. If you want to know more about CAN, check out my previous video, I go into detail on CAN theory and I also have another video how to set up a basic CAN system in Arduino. Today, I'm going to be talking about how the pros use CAN uh, with Linux. Uh, it turns out that basic CAN drivers are included in the Linux kernel. So as long as you have a Linux uh, distribution running, you just have to install uh, CAN tools, which is super easy to do. I'll show you how to do that. And you can start hacking CAN buses right away. So if you want to learn how to become an EV engineer, stay tuned in this video, and I'll show you the basics of CAN and Linux. Now, before we get into detail on how to set up CAN and Linux, I just briefly wanted to show you um, the hardware that you're going to need for following along a demo like this. So you're going to need some USB to CAN interface, uh, assuming your computer has USB ports, which it most certainly does. And for this, uh, there's actually a pretty awesome board that you can just buy on Amazon here. It's $35. And if you compare that to like a typical industry tool, which is a pecan dongle, these are going for like $250, just an absolute ripoff. You can get a cheap one for $35 on Amazon and it works great. So I highly recommend this. So next you're gonna need a device that is capable of transmitting CAN data because I'm gonna be reading that CAN data in Linux. And so I have a breadboard with an ESP32 and I bought these CAN modules with, which have a CAN transceiver and a built-in terminating resistor. So it's pretty straightforward. You just need to connect two wires to the microcontroller, power ground, and there you go, you have a CAN system. If you're interested in how to set this up, check out my previous video where I do the whole thing from scratch. I solder uh, all the connections. I set up the basic Arduino driver and that'll get you started. I'm gonna be flashing a simple CAN driver onto my ESP32, which is just gonna transmit some data. So connect your ESP32 to the computer and um, flash the sketch onto it. So it's connected to COM6 for me and you just flash. So this is the same CAN driver that I found in my previous video. So if you wanna check out how it works, go watch that video. But for now, we're just gonna flash this onto the microcontroller. And there you have it. Now we have a TX device. And we'll just open up the serial monitor to make sure that it's alive. And there it is. And it is, it is trying to send a CAN packet. So now that we have our microcontroller set up to TX data, we now need to somehow connect uh, our microcontroller to our computer. And this is where the USB to CAN converter comes in. So this board has a D sub nine uh, connector port on the CAN side. And if we just scroll to the pinout here, we can see that each pin has a number and it tells us exactly what that pin is. So two is CAN low and seven is CAN high. So what I'm gonna do is pretty hacky. I have the CAN converter right here and I'm actually just gonna connect two jumper wires to CAN low and CAN high and connect those to my microcontroller. I know it's a bit of a hack, but that's where the fun is. So I'm gonna take these two jumper wires and just connect them directly to these pins here. So we know that can high is gonna be pin seven. So that will be this one. And it's not a perfect fit, so you might have to push a little harder than usual. And we know that can low is going to be the second one up top. There we go. Nice and secure. So I'm going to take can high, which is this white wire, and I will connect it like this. And we have can low, which is this purple wire, and I will just connect that to the green wire, which is also can low. There we go, our can system. So now we're just going to connect this, and then we're going to connect this. And there you have it. We have our CAN system with a CAN bus that's hacked together, going into a CAN to USB converter into my computer. 
So now I'm gonna show you how to set up a simple VM on your computer so that you can use Linux. Now, you don't have to use a VM. If you're crazy enough, you can dual boot your computer, you can use a Raspberry Pi, but as it turns out, getting a VM is actually really easy to do and it allows me to still use all my Windows features such as recording this video. Now, there's two things you need to know about installing a VM. Uh, one is there's this thing called a hypervisor. So let's just take a look at what a hypervisor is. So a hypervisor, if we just Google it, uh, is this piece of software here, this is a good one, uh, which allows you to run other operating systems. So a type one hypervisor is really expensive and usually uh, only used for commercial use, but you have your hardware, you have your hypervisor, boom, you can run multiple operating systems. Type two hypervisor, you have your hardware, you have your operating system, which is Windows in this case, uh, then you have your hypervisor on top of your OS, and then from there you can run many uh, distributions, and that's what we're gonna do because it's pretty easy to set up and it's free. So there are two popular hypervisors that people use to install uh, Linux VMs, and those are VMware or Oracle VirtualBox. So I've been using Oracle VirtualBox for a couple of years now, and it's pretty good, but you know sometimes it has issues, and I really just wanted to try uh, VMware for the first time, so I did that uh, a few days ago. And I was actually super impressed. This VM has been really fast. And uh, yeah, honestly, so far it just seems better than VirtualBox, but maybe I'll run into issues later down. And let's go to products and we're looking for a workstation player. This is the free one. So we're just gonna click that, click download for free. Uh, let's click this one go to downloads. I'm gonna use the windows cause that's what I have download. There you go, it's downloading. Go to your downloads, run the installer, it's brain dead easy, I don't wanna do it again. But once you do that, come back to this video and we'll continue on. Great, so now that you have VMware installed, let's download Kali Linux. Kali Linux, download Windows 10, 64-bit, get Kali Linux. Cool, I want a virtual machine. Oh, look at this, I'm using VMware. And you can see the other options here, virtual box, but we have this, so let's go here. And look, it's already downloading, great. So this is gonna install a .7-zip, you can see the extension here. If you don't have 7-zip already, go install it. You probably guessed, go to there, download, whatever, install it, unpack it, and then now you have everything you need to uh, boot up a Kali VM. Once you have 7-zip installed, go to your desktop, click this, click extract, Put it in your uh, desktop. I'm gonna make a little subfolder here. Kali, okay, there you go. Now you have all your files. Then click this to run your VM player. Then open up VM Workstation. So you can see here, I already have Kali Linux installed, but if you don't have that already, go to, uh, go to 7-zip package. So for me, that would be desktop, Kali, click this. I don't wanna do that again, but once you have that done, pretty much all you have to do is go here, click play, there you go, you have VM. So now let's boot up this VM right here, and you can see it's all right here, it's beautiful. So now that we have a terminal open, you're gonna need a package called canutils, so we'll do sudo apt uh, install canutils. This is the package that has uh, all the utilities that you need to use can and Linux. So you can see I already have it installed. Let's get some in more information about this. So sudo apt uh, show can utils. And look at that, we got some cool information. Thank you, Alexander Jarisyov for making this package. Um, there's some information here if you wanna learn about it. So now we need to uh, connect the USB device to this VM so that we can actually use it. So to do that, you go to player removal devices, uh, these are all my devices, but the one we care about, OpenMoco, USB CAN voltage 3.3. That's probably the one we want. Connect. You would do this device to be unplugged from the host and connected to this VM. Yes, that's what I want. Okay, so now let's verify that it works. Let's do LS USB. And look at this, OpenMoco, Inc. Just Swister Schneider CAN adapter. So now that we have all our hardware connected, we're gonna to go to our terminal and let's just see what sort of socket interfaces we have available. So we'll do IP link LS. 
And we can see we have a few options here. We can see we have Ethernet. And look at that, we have CAN. Now you can see here that the CAN interface is down. And as you might imagine, we need that CAN interface to be up. So what are we gonna do? We're going to put it up. And the way we do that is through this command here, sudo IP link set up CAN zero, type CAN bitrate 500 kilobits per second. Let's enter that, let's verify it worked. And look at that, it is up, up is good. So now we're gonna use this cool tool called CAN dump. And as you might guess from the name, this is just gonna dump everything on our network to the terminal. Now, recall that we set up our microcontroller to TX a message, um, specifically EV engineer. So let's just verify that the microcontroller is doing what it should be doing. So it tells us that it is sending packets. So let's go back to our VM and let's can dump. Look at this, we're getting data. What do you think this data means? Well, let's find out. So let's go here, let's copy this. Ah, if it'll let me. Copy selection. Let's go to every firmware engineer's favorite tool. We'll say hex to ASCII converter. And this is the good one, I think. Good enough. Let's paste this in here, convert. And look at that, EV engineer. Who would have thought? Now you might be wondering, uh, what, what's all this other stuff here? So we have can zero, random number, random number in square brackets, and then our message, we already know what the message means. Let's go to our Arduino sketch real quick, and we can see here that it is, it is setting the can ID to 0x12, so the can ID is used for arbitration if we have multiple nodes on the bus. In our case, we only have one node, so it doesn't really matter too much. However, you can see here that we're getting 012, 012, 012, so it's clearly coming from this CAN node. So what is this eight in square, bra square brackets, you might ask? Well, if you recall, we have eight characters here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight characters, and how many bytes does one character take up? That's right, one byte. So we have eight bytes of data, so that is what this is telling us, and then followed by our message. I personally think that this CAN stuff is super interesting and I'm learning how to use all these CAN tools myself. So if you'd like to join me in my journey of becoming a socket CAN expert, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And another video I think would be pretty cool is actually writing a CAN driver or the C++. Let me know in the comments if you think that'd be a good video. And as always, keep hacking and keep learning, keep having fun doing cool engineering projects. See ya.